Hey, I'm Verity. I'm a PhD student in the Dukovic lab at Charité in Berlin, and I study this little fish called Dalinodus rubrum. Um, so primarily, primarily, I'm interested in um, the social context of acoustic communication. So, what are animals saying to each other, and and why? So these fish are very, very small. So they're about a centimeter big and they are originally from Myanmar, so close to India, and they live in turbid streams. So the water they live in is very murky. They can't see each other. Um, and these fish are transparent and they make loud sounds to communicate with each other. The way sounds travel underwater and in air is slightly different. Um, so it's quite hard to compare what it would sound like to us if we were um, or like it's quite hard to compare to what, how it would sound to a human in the air. But we know that about a centimetre away from the fish, so one fish length away from the fish, so this is how close the other fish are, so they hear it at 140 decibels. Um, but then when you stand one metre away in the air, how we hear the sound, um, then it's about 108 decibels. I think this is similar to a chicken, maybe, um, from about a metre away. Um, yeah, so it's definitely loud enough to, to hear with the human ear very clearly, but uh, not loud enough to cause you any, any pain when you uh, listen to the fish from, from a meter away. Fish in general, there's about a thousand known fish species that can make sounds and they use it, or they can make sounds using two main mechanisms. So one is using this mechanism called stridulation. So this is where bones and teeth rub together to make sounds kind of like an insect, like a chirping sound. And the other main mechanism is when the fish use their swim bladder. So inside fish, there's a big ball of gas that they use to control how much they float in the, in the water column. But some fish have special muscles that then make this swim bladder vibrate, kind of like hitting a balloon, and then this makes a sound. So with our fish, it wasn't clear exactly how they made this sound because they, the sounds sound like, like a chirping, like an insect sound, except we didn't find any special bones that could rub together to make this sound. Um, what we did find were the, these two muscles called drumming muscles that sit just next to the swim bladder and the muscles are kind of hollow and inside the muscle there's a rib and a piece of cartilage and then when the muscle contracts it pulls the rib and then this squeezes the cartilage and then suddenly the cartilage is released and it strikes the swim bladder um, so this is kind of like hitting a drum and this is what we find makes the sound so the muscles contract quite quickly and they alternate on each side the left and right sound uh, left and right side and then um, this is like hitting a drum like this, and this is how the sounds are produced. Um, we know that if you have one fish by itself, if you isolate them, they don't make any sounds. So we're quite sure that it's some sort of uh, acoustic, or it's some sort of communication. Um, and only the males have the apparatus, only the males have the special muscle and the rib and the cartilage that they need to actually make sounds. Um, and if you have multiple males in a tank, then they make sounds, but if you have one male and a bunch of females, they also make sounds. So we think that the sounds have some sort of, um, well, they, the sounds are used maybe for aggressive behaviour between males in competition, but also for courtship and mating behaviour with females and males together. But it's quite unclear at the moment exactly which kinds of sounds um, are associated with different kinds of behaviour and how the audience influences the sounds that the fish can make. Yeah, so actually in my undergrad, in my master's, I studied physics and space physics, actually. And I, I really enjoyed it a lot, but I found that physics tries to describe the universe, but it misses life. Um, and then I was looking more into how can I apply the things that I've learned um, from physics, but in a, a field that kind of incorporates um, yeah, like life and 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 biology um and then the more i was looking into it the more i realized how little we know about the brain and the brain is so fascinating um but really very difficult to to tackle and then i came across this little fish that we study in the lab and because they're small and transparent um, we have optical access so we can look inside their brains and we have genetically engineered them so then when the brain is active we can it actually emits light so we can use special microscopes to study the, um, study the brain. So with this fish, I found that it was just such a great model to be able to access the brain on a, a level that is interpretable, but still complex enough for there to be interesting uh, results. And then yeah, this, this particular project looking at acoustic communication um, is very special to this fish because they, they make sounds. Um, so with other animals that make interesting sounds like birds or, or monkeys, then you have very limited access uh, to the brain. So that's how I kind of started studying this fish um, because I think that they're a really great model to study the brain and especially acoustic communication.